everybody. Welcome to this week's How To Tuesday. I'm very excited about this one. This is a little different. Um, it's going to be line work related, but it is going to be a blind contour. I love me a good blind contour. I love blind contour. There was a time where I was obsessed with blind contours. I could do them constantly. Now I know uh, there's a majority of you that already know what a blind contour is, but you can never do too many because they absolutely every single time turn out differently. So um, there's also some of you that do not know, and I have a lot of new members of my group and also to my YouTube channel, group Next Generation on Facebook, YouTube channel, and um, Instagram as well. So I thought, why not do a blind contour? So we're going to do a little different. First of all, you see an array of pens. I have Sharpies, I have Prismacolor, and then I have just a bunch of different fine liners. Some are big intensity, some are for my sketchbox that I get every year or every month. This is a Stabilo fine liner, but you can see I have a color palette. I have a warm color palette, and then I threw in a complementary but contrasting color. Now it could go either way, it could go warm or cool. So I have my reds, um, oranges, pinks, blues, or pinks, yellows, and a purple in an array. And I just did it because I wanted different pen tips, and, you know, pen, ties it, pen sizes, and like some fine lines and some um, thicker lines. and a variety of color choices and then I just have you know my choice of it just depends I just pick I just I have a whole bunch together and I just grab them a couple of thick sharpies for some thicker areas and then I have a sharpie pen and then I have a Derwent line marker um, for the finer details I also grabbed my charcoal pencils because I tend to like to use them for some shading I'm not sure because I have color happening that I'm going to use them but I have them it's just a general's charcoal black and white and then a general's peel and sketch charcoal um, just newly rediscovered this in my search for, oh, I also have this one, which is another Faber-Castell uh, fine tip marker, because um, I'm prepping for my 100 Days of Abstract course right now, and I just newly discovered this again. I had it. I've had it for years, and because I was looking to do some charcoal work, um, I found it again, and I love it. I love the intensity of this one. This one is 5632T Medium, and it's a peel and sketch charcoal by General's Pencil, or General Pencil. It's so cool. The color is awesome. I love the pigment. Anyways, so, and then the substrate I'm working on is 110 pound, it's eight and a half by eight and a half, 110 pound Spring Hill Digital um, cardstock. I love this. I use this for my Copic markers. I use this for my graphite work. I use, I use this a lot. If I'm not doing a wet medium, I use this one a lot. I use, like, if I was just thinking, I pause for a second to think, like, do I do that with watercolor? I do sometimes, but most of the time, one, because this is less expensive than watercolor paper, I'll go to this. If it's something that is, could potentially be, you know, I add some watercolor or some glue or something, I'll use, um, I'll do watercolor. But if I know for sure, I'm going to use 110 pound digital Spring Hill cardstock. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I found this image online I loved her face um, and uh, I flipped it so we're gonna do two side by side this is a little interesting because I'm not used to looking this way now old school way and it's it actually works for those of you who are learning to draw just portrait work in general portrait work in general they say flip it over because here we try to draw what we remember you know we all know where eyes go nose goes mouth goes that kind of thing so we get stuck in Draw, looking at what we are, you know, drawing what we see as opposed to what we know. When you go here, you're forced to look at what it is you are drawing. Okay, so you're not going, oh, I know where everything belongs. Nope, you're forced to look because it's, your mind is trying to figure this out the whole time it's processing. So it forces you to go to slow down and you'll get a more um, accurate depiction of the face because you're not so focused on this in terms of like, oh, I already know everything. I know where stuff goes. I can do this. This forces you to stop saying that to yourself because this you might you might absolutely know, but doing it this way and you're new to it, it can be frustrating. If you go here, it gives you another skill and a technique and it forces you to stop thinking about this and what we already know and actually drawing what we're seeing. OK, so that's just re this is not about this project. This is just in general. I'm just giving a little tip. This we are not supposed to do. Um, it's not supposed to look anything like anything. You'll tell that you'll notice that their faces, but it's a blind contour. And what blind contour means is that, or sorry, not a blind contour. It's a contour drawing. I love personally love doing blind contours. Um, and I might actually a blind contour is basically you have something. It could be anything. It could be a shoe. It could be a cat. It could be a person. It could be whatever. And you, you take your, um, 
you're looking at your image and you find a spot and you don't look down until you're finished. It's funny, I'm doing it right now like you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> you start and then you start drawing. You don't lift your pen or pencil, whatever it is you're using, and you draw it without um, looking down. So when you look down and you're finished, you're like, okay, I'm done. You lift your pencil. When you look down, you go, oh, I personally love that. Love the way that looks. You can do that if you choose to. You can do a blind contour. I'm going to teach it as a contour drawing. So I am going to look at my two beautiful faces here and I'm going to um, make sure because I don't want to run out of room because I want to put both of them on here. They're going to overlap probably a little bit in the center, which I'm totally down for. I love it. Um, but I'm going to draw still not lifting my pencil but I'm going to follow. I'm going to look back and forth as you know, from little kids, we're trained to look back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So doing a blind contour is a challenge. It's a very fun challenge. I love this challenge, but, um, because for the purpose of this, I don't want to run out of space, you know, because especially cause I'm doing two, if I was doing one, I probably would do a blind contour cause it's easy enough to keep it here, but I'm going to do two. So I'm going to go look back and forth, but I'm still not going to lift my pencil. So you're going to have like, if I draw, like I'm going to draw, you know, her head. I always start at the top of the head and then I go down and I throw in the hair, throw in the ear, the jawline. You can put the neck in or not, do the hair. You see, I've not lifted my pencil at all. Now, to get to one thing to the next, you're going to have one continuous line that will connect the entire thing. You might overlap a couple times when you do this. I just drew her face. Isn't that funny? You might overlap. Like I drew the eye here first, went down, came up around the nose, went up to the other eye. Put it, do not forget the eyebrows, the pupil of the eye. People forget the pupil of the eye a lot and it makes them look a little demonic <laughs> and scary. So try not to forget the, the pupil and if there's eyelashes that are obvious, put those in. But then I'm going to come, then I came back down here to the mouth, still not lifting, one continuous line. And then I didn't finish this eye, so I'm going to come back up. Notice I didn't lift and I'm going to come back up and add the pupil, the eyelashes, the eyebrow, the whole shebang. -y. And I might end up having to come, like, go to the side here come all the way down and then put in her neck. Okay. And then after we're done, we're going to fill it in with lines and, and solid pigment. You know what? I might also grab my, my, um, white gel pens, a couple of my white gel pens. Cause I might want to do some doodles with that as well. And that's it. This is fun. You guys, this is fun, fun, fun. I'm very excited. I love doing a contour and it's been a long time since I've done a contour. If you're interested and you fall in love with this contour, um, I also have a lesson a couple years ago, I think now and on my YouTube channel, you'll see it's a contour lesson I did with Karen Campbell um, or for Karen Campbell a few years ago. Uh, yeah. And it was very fun. It was part of like, I think I was, did a class for her or something. So anywho, have fun. If you like what you're seeing and you're enjoying the How To Tuesdays, please like and subscribe. Click that bell so you get those personal notifications and join us over at Next Generation Art on Facebook. It's my group. It's fun, fabulous such a joy group. It, they're just so many happy souls, creative minds and spirits. And it's, it's a pleasure to, um, be there. So we would love for you to join us. I'll have the link for that in the description box. Okay. Have a great day. I will see you next week. Let's get started.
I finished. That was so much fun. These are so much fun for me. As you can see, <coughs> another thing I could just keep going and going and going on. The cool part too is also you need to figure out which side you want to be the side, you know, where you could put your signature. Always, do you guys always remember to sign your stuff, sign your stuff. And um, you saw that I also whipped out the Posca paint pen. It did a little, I try not to do it too much on this paper I know, but when I started this I said I don't use wet medium. And it was wet and it does kind of create a texture on the paper because it's cardstock and it's not mint. But if you use a Posca paint pen, I just, I'm obsessed with like neon pinks, obviously. I'm just obsessed with neons, period, but neon pinks just, they have my heart. But um, it does leave a little bit of a texture and just try not to go over it in the same spot a million times because you'll start to get pilling like really quick. So if you choose to use Posca paint pens, by all means. Um, what else was I going to say? I think that's it. Feel free to, like I did, I added things that weren't even part of the segments, like, you know, the, the outlines that I drew. I just added extra. Obviously, feel free to do whatever it is that you want to do. I also played with the idea of bringing out my colored pencils because I could come in and do some shading and stuff, but I wanted to keep this more illustrative, like just flat. I didn't want to add some shades and shadows and depth and stuff. So, but you're more than welcome to put colored pencil in this. This could take you hours, truthfully, if you really wanted it to. Like you could do all the pen work first, which is what I would have done, and then I would come in with my colored pencils and work on top of it. You could do it in your Carpathellos if you have your Carpathell chalk pastel pencils. Just be leery because it is a pastel and it will move if you hit it, and there's a lot of little fine detail. So um, you can use it like for pops, or you can do the whole thing. Just keep something between your hand as you work and work, you know, carefully. Other than that, this was super super cool like I said you can do this these contour drawings with anything anything out in the world in the universe it doesn't have to be people it could be anything you could do a contour drawing and if you've never done a blind contour drawing I would love to suggest that you do that also because that is super fun because it's just it just makes you feel good it just makes you feel good when you when you look down after you've drawn the whole thing you look down and you see what happens it's very fun it's fun to do with family like have everybody sit across from each other and do blind contours it's really fun to do so anyways thank you so much for being here this was awesome. I hope you have fun and I cannot wait to see what you guys do. Okay, see you next week. Bye.